We're starting with Ernst Kirchner. Now, he led a group known as De Bruck, or The Bridge, and this group would sell books of prints. You would buy a subscription, and then at the end of the year, you would get a portfolio full of prints from this group of artists' uh, work for the year. And this is a great way for them to raise money. It's where they get the money to create the other pieces that are frequently the ones that we talk about. Most of them are going to be inspired by German medieval art. These artists would protest the hypocrisy and materialistic decadence of those in power, especially Kirchner. Now, he grows up in a pacifist, nudist, vegan colony in Germany. And you can only imagine coming from that anti-materialistic background and coming into a highly consumeristic world and what his reaction would be. And of course, we're going to see that in just a minute. Now, Kirchner himself focused attention on the effects of industrialization. He saw an impersonal, mechanized society. His paintings reflect tensions that are developing as World War I nears. And we're going to look at his street, Dresden, of 1908. Now, this is a glimpse into urban activity before World War I, albeit a rather creepy and disturbing glimpse into it. What we see is a jarring and dissonant painting in both color and composition. We see large women looming into the viewer's space. And... They're coming at us in a confrontational way. They cannot be avoided. But why? What do they mean? Well, this is the emptiness of consumerism. These are middle-class women whose men are probably running a factory, as Kirchner looks at it. And they've lost their soul. Their soul is being spent buying the things that show their middle class status. They're spending too much time keeping up with the Joneses to keep up with their own self-interest. Uh, the distortions make them appear ghoulish. And color and brushwork reflect the influence of Monk. You can see the scream in this where he's distorting the composition as well as the color. Now, as we look at, there are a few things I want to call your attention to. First of all, this woman in front, you would think at first glance she's holding a purse, but really that looks like a human heart, like she's holding it upside down. You're seeing the aortic arch at the bottom there. That's disturbing, but it gets across that sense of a zombie-like, soulless form who's removed their heart and is almost trading it to have the things that they need to keep up with the rest of the middle class. After all, as I've pointed out before, if you're working class, you're too busy to worry about status. If you're upper class, you don't really care that much. It's not that important. But if you're middle class, you want to show your status to everyone. And we see the same thing today, especially in consumerist society. Now, he also gives us this child standing in front of the trolley uh, in the middle of these tracks, giving us a sense of children being somehow shaped and created in the image of their mothers. And they don't have a choice. They're going to become zombies themselves. They're going to become soulless husks that go about their day just trying to keep up with the rest of society. So what we're seeing here is a depiction of his view of Dresden at the time. We're getting his expression of what the urban landscape is like, what life is like in Dresden, and how all of this plays a role. So to him, consumerism takes away from the experience of humanity. You're spending all of this time spending your resources on something that's fairly irrelevant when you should be improving yourself in far better ways, reading or joining nudist pacifist colonies in Germany, whatever it happens to be. But he's really working in the mold of artists like Van Gogh, who are giving us a purely biological, sorry, biographical context. They're giving us paintings that speak to them, that tell us what they think of the scene or whatever's going on. And we get that very strongly in Kirchner, in Street, Dresden. 